Hi everyone, you're here at Doug, aka The Real Link, and today we're going to be doing another hardware comparison that's been a while in coming, partly due to the amount of tests involved. Arguably, I've run to a limit with a single threading performance of the Xeon chips, so I thought, hey, let's change things up a bit and see where that road would lead me. So to briefly summarize, I wanted to compare two but similar but different architectures from an end-user point of view. On one end, a Xeon E5645 processor overclocked from 2.4 to 3.6 GHz using a Corsair H80 in an EVGA SR2, versus a similar 6-core i7 4930K at basically stock speeds, adjusted very slightly to reach 3.6 GHz with boost by default, basically at stock. Both are hex core parts, but the Xeon has bigger cache. Does it actually translate to performance gains versus the i7's newer architecture, die shrink, etc.? Was the change of system a downgrade, side grade, or upgrade? Both systems are using relatively similar specs. RAM on the SR2 was at 36.8 GB DDR3 at 1111-1128-1T at 1600 MHz. On the EVGA Dark X79, there's 32 gig of G-Skill Sniper 99912-1T DDR3 at 1866, or something pretty close to that. One difference of minor note is the X79 board using the Intel controller for the SATA driver, so it allows my SSD to exceed manufacturer spec, whereas the Marvel controller of the SR2 was limiting. Both systems, however, use the EVGA GTX Titan at stock speeds, 313.95 or 331.65 drivers. They are utilizing natural boost overclocking, no clock offset direct overclocking was done. First up we have the overall gaming benchmark. Not surprisingly, the more modern i7 chip, even with slight refinements over the Western Year Xeon, at least didn't make gaming any worse. I generally saw a 0 to 10% improvement overall, but as the charts show, sometimes a game or two showed significant improvement. Not to say the Xeons couldn't game. They could quite well, actually. Just that the newest i7 performs as well, or better. If you're going to spend the budget that generally quad or hex core Xeons carry for gaming, then you can budget for an i5 or i7 and be happy. Next we have the overall points metric. There is far more discrepancy here simply due to the SR2 system having 12 cores and 24 threads versus the 4930K's K, uh, 4930K 6 and 12 respectively. Some die shrinking and architectural improvement does generally allow for a greater than 50% improvement of a single chipped SR2 however. Naturally it's not expected to reach a 1 to 1 ratio in truly any multi-core, aka only 3D rendering tasks between both systems. Most large digressions and comparative scores tend to again fall back on overall cache or sheer number of cores such as Folding at Home or Cinema 4D. A couple of Final Fantasy XIV benchmarks seem to strongly favor the newer architecture, but naturally the game is quite playable on either machine. 3D Mark, 2013 edition, Cloudgate seems to rely much more on overall physics than the other tests, and while I cannot be certain it used both E5645's processing cores for physics, that or cache could explain a distinct point result, though arguably small in real-world use. For overall benchmarking, the recommendation still stands that know what programs you're running, and if they favor a particular system optimization, then build with that in mind. Finally, we have the time metric. Needless to say, this was the most shocking chart of all. Sure, I expect plenty of deviations, since again, you can only save so much time with half the core count, and sure enough, most rendering tasks idealize the expectation nicely. The discrepancy in museum rendering is due to an outdated, but for this purpose superior speed-wise, scanline rendering method compared to traditional bucket rendering. It still does fall into the slightly multi-core territory, though. For Premiere and After Effects, however, the difference is quite extreme. Surprisingly, the 4930K can finish most simple editing tasks in nearly half the time of the E5645s, since neither program was using true full use of all system cores. I'd be led to believe that the 4930K 
he has made use of far more advanced encoding speed-up instructions on chip directly. I do not usually do heavy GPU effects, but even if that were done, the GPU has remained consistent. So seeing these results did shock me, and of course they were rerun to me for making sure things were consistent. In terms of FRAPS files, the improved Intel SATA controller on the X79 board may be partly to credit for the processing speedup, since the heaviest RAW encodes use 4GB of RAW 420 FRAPS footage every 9 seconds. However, the tests rather reflect a more long-term capture session, more typical of gameplay, such as between 1 and 200 megabytes per second. For incredibly multi-core or heavy effects rendering, it's possible that the SR2 could overtake a 4930K. However, again, for more traditional video compression, the 4930 chip is superb, short of any pro real-time conversion. In the latest Tom's hardware, Mac Pro 2013 edition just released, one can easily see even the latest Xeon E5 server chips being limited by workflow in Premiere and other programs, thus proving to be not a true a good, true multi-core test. So in conclusion, if you're gaming, there's nothing wrong with i7 or its brethren. Just be sure you can find some good comparative benchmarks, such as through CPU Boss, CPUbenchmark.net, Anantech, Tom's Hardware, etc., and know what to expect before you buy. In terms of overall overall pro productivity, however, the 4930K strikes a good balance between modern enough architecture to power past so-called old chips, yet having enough cores to make true multi-core processing tasks take forever. Or I could always toss a Xeon E5 into the socket, as can be shown by most review sites. It is often a mixed bag when you're reviewing products and doing benchmarks. So in conclusion, as you can see, I've given the 4930K uh, a dubious award of gold, uh, though I'm not really any big dog review site, but hopefully for those of you comparing, and curious how a Xeon compares to uh, the newest i7-4930K chip. Hopefully this video helps.